Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another installment of the original Drink and Draw Social Club Happy Hour Live Woo! with our very special guest this evening, Mr. Adam Kubert. Ta-da. Ta-da. Hi, Adam. Way boring fans, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us are all the usual suspects, Jeff, Dave, Joe, and Dan. That's so right. hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. How's everyone doing this evening? Pretty good. Doing well. Yeah. How you doing, Ben? I can't complain. I'm doing okay. I think Can everybody hear Joe, Joe now? Joe has lost his microphone, maybe? Joe, you've lost your mic. Yep. Yep. All right, shit. <laughs> Already technical. With the struggle continues. <laughs> yes. Let's start it's over. A battle. It's always a battle. You know. Jeff, you sound excellent, though. I just Thank you. That. I mean, it's taken me, what, 30 episodes to sort of <laughs> dial it in, but I think I got a handle on it now. 31 episodes. <laughs> yeah. I'm a very, was, just ask Dan, I'm a very slow learner. <laughs> I was um, freaking out a little bit, trying to cut and paste the, the, the link into my phone, and it wasn't working, and you know, I was like, oh, uh, It worked out good. It, it worked. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of missed uh, the catalog. We can't hear you, Joe. Yeah. No. I can hear Joe, but I can't tell if it's through his mic or. Yeah. Um, you know what? This is probably about as good as it's going to get. We might just want to call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> like a <laughs> Thanks for listening, Joe. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> yeah. That was easy. I'll see you later. <laughs> this makes up for the two and a half hour episode a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I guess we owe people a break, right? <laughs> Dave, it looks like it's already at it. Whoa, what is that, Dave? Oh, that's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy guy? Yeah, I'm working on a, on a cover. So. Nice. Uh, I think it's the official name, isn't it? It's already been, it's it's already been, been, yeah. <laughs> it's already been solicited, so I don't have to worry about it. So. Why doesn't he have a hand? Well, I'm working on it, Dan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, how about this? Is any better? It is. Yeah. We can hear you a little bit, Joe. You kind of can I get here? How about that? There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Now we're cooking with gas. Should we start with yeah, <laughs> Adam, what are you drinking? Okay. If you don't mind me asking. I'm off the rim. I am drinking uh, Sam Adams uh, Bruce Lager. Nice. Yeah. Fancy. And, and autumn beer. Seasonal. What's that? Seasonal. So it's seasonal. Those yeah. are the best. Seasonal. Yeah, the Sam Adams one. I like the um the how the, the yeah the autumn one's great. Yeah, it is good. Is, is, hey Jeff, have you ever met a beer that you didn't like? <laughs> I'm not really a big fan of um uh the porters. I see. Like the darker mm. ones. I like they, they they have one here. It's a, it's a coconut chocolate porter, and it's tasty, but it's, it's not my it's not, not necessarily beer. my cup of tea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm. You think chocolate? I did. I said coconut chocolate. Yeah. Mm, well, there's your problem right there. Is the coconut? Yeah. yeah. And the chocolate. Yeah. So yeah, some of those kind of beers are not necessarily uh, what I go for. But no, Dave, I, I like most of them. How about uh, Schlitz malt liquor? Um, mm. I don't know if I comes had on bold. Uh, like only if it comes in a forty. Oh, nice. All right. There's no other way to drink it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's, if it's in a 40, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> you're, you're all about it. Yeah. Adam, what the hell are you doing? What are you working on? Can you hear him? What? Who? What? 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 Tony, yeah. Tony oh, Dudley, right. who's like our, our man outside, is texting me. Let's see if he... Adam, uh, what are you drawing there? I'm drawing uh, a Captain America... Um, commission, remark. Can you see that? You can and, see it. Uh, he's holding nice. the Thor hammer. That's ah. what I wanted. And the interesting part is, I, this was already on there. This black, I guess it's a signature. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's a little odd. He gave me this cover to draw it on with the signature already there. But you know, I guess I'll work around it. Random. Well, draw it <laughs> shitty and then blame it on the the guy who signed it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that was wasn't me. Yeah, <laughs> you have the high ability. No stress, right? 
Do you do a lot of commission pieces, Adam? You know, I do very, very few commissions. These, these, I've got like three or four sitting here. I've, I've had them for like six months. You know. Why do you, um, why do you hate the fans? Why, yeah. Why do What's I hate the that? fans? <laughs> I don't hate them. I love them. But, <laughs> I like doing the sketches. I mean, it, it, it's nice. It's, it's, uh, you know, it frees you up. I like signing my, my regular work under me after I'm doing a, a, a commission because I'm nice and loose and, you know, I bring some of that, that, you know, that energy over to my regular work instead of, uh, you know, some, sometimes I find when I'm working on my regular work, um, and I'm a little tight, a little stiff and, you know, a sketch or something loosens you up, you know, loosens me up. So I should do these have you ever, Have you ever thought about Dan coming over to your house and giving you a massage? <laughs> I think about that all the time. <laughs> yeah. I have dibs, though, Dave. You can't just be handing those things out. I have Lucky all the coupons. In... Dave gave me all the hand-drawn coupons. I'm owed. <laughs> he takes coupons? <laughs> <laughs> Always for birthday presents, he'll give you a, a massage coupon. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So you're drawing a Captain America sketch. What book are you working on right now? Uh, I'm working on Wolverine. Cool. Uh, New book coming out, uh, starting with issue one, written by Ben Percy. Um, and uh, I think it comes out in February. So uh, first issue is uh, 60 pages, 30 of which I'm doing, and then uh, another artist is doing the, the second half. Um, and uh, it's, it's really, really great. It's a great story. I've never worked with Ben before. Um, and it's just, it's awesome. Awesome. Who's uh who who do they got following you? I would hate to be that guy. <laughs> well, two and three issues, two and three I'm doing, and I think, geez, I forget the guy's name. Damn it, um, who's who's following me on it? But I, I I think the plan is I'll do three, he does three, I do three, he does three, and and I'm sure there's going to be more than twelve issues in a year. So that way, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep them coming out every month or more than every month. Cool. Did you get to pick the what? Uh, did you get to pick the costume? Like, what's his outfit going to be? We were just talking oh. about the the claws. Yeah, yeah. No, the costume is based on the one uh, from uh, Powers of Ten and House of X. Oh, cool. So it's it's like a, it, it's basically the brown costume with uh, some variations, um, and it's cool. I, I like the, the 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 darker color costume. Um, and speaking of you know Powers of X and, and or Powers of Ten and House of X. Those books are like. Have you guys seen those books? I've uh, I've read a few of them online. Yeah, I mean, talk about motivation. Yeah, actually, Adam, you guys are really seeing that. The stories are, are great. You know, it's just it's just awesome. It feels like you know, it feels like something uh, you know really special is happening, and and you know, I just love being a part of it. That's super cool. Yeah. It's cool to see some continuity in the books too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of central line. Yeah. And I mean, and doing Wolverine, it, it's like putting on an old pair of shoes. You know, it just feels really, really good. So I'm pretty psyched. Have you changed the way you've drawn them over the years? You know, I, I think everybody's style kind of changes as they go on. Um, for me, it, it does change depending on the book that I'm doing. You know, if it's a darker character like like Wolverine, I'll, I'll use more blacks. Um, if it's a lighter character like like Superman, we'll, uh, I'll use less blacks. And, you know, more room for color. So in, I do change up the style a little bit. But, you know, after you do for, you know, comics for a period of time, you know, your, your style evolves. You know, I mean, when I started, you know, you tried to make your work color proof because, you know, there right. was no such thing as, as digital coloring at that point. And, you know, you had to put a lot of rendering in to make up for the rendering that today they, they do in the coloring. Um, yeah, and they so, do it so well. It's, it's yeah, insane. Yeah. If they do it well. <laughs> you know, sometimes if they, right. you know, they can overdo it. I mean, if you, if you render a lot in the black and white and then they render a lot in the color, it, it tends to get muddy. You may not, you know, it may be difficult to see the drawing. So oh, I, I think 
so I think if you leave more open, like like Dave, I mean, you're 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 stuff is so graphic and so beautiful, and it, it must be a, a colorist's dream. Do you color? Do you color your covers, Dave? Yeah, I've, I gave up on getting colored years ago because I just got tired of you know it's well I mean even with the best colors you're still talking about you know somebody trying to interpret what you want as opposed to just doing it yourself well, and, Dave's a very complicated man as you know <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yes so I just and and you know once I figured out Photoshop I was like well shit why am I getting other people to do what I could do you know right so, and, you know, come hit or miss, at least I'm the guy who's responsible, you know. I'm not the greatest colorist, you know, but uh, at least I have nobody to blame but myself. So. <laughs> but it's your vision, too. It's a more personal, you know, it's a more personal way to work. Yeah. Um, oh, totally. You know, um, like, years ago, I, that explain? I would only muscle, yep. you know, because that was the way I got my work done. Uh, I couldn't do the penciling and inking. These days, you know, the past, you know, eight, nine years, I've been penciling and inking, and it, it just feels really great because it's a more personal expression of, you know, what we do. Um, right. The next step would be to color it. I mean, I've done coloring before when it was like blue line, but you know, sometimes don't get along, <laughs> you know? And, and the learning curve, you know, um, I don't know. I just got to decide to do it. How long did it take you to, to figure out Photoshop to, to color on? It wasn't long because, I mean, if you break it down to its core elements, it's actually pretty easy. Um, it's when you start getting, if you start trying to learn too much too fast, you get overwhelmed. Right. You know? So I think that'll be the key for you is just go slow, learn the, the, the very minimal basics master them and then you can move on you know right right and not dave, do you know how to deadline <laughs> right. well that too yeah <laughs> dave you already knew how to paint though didn't you have some experience like painting traditionally yeah but i mean photoshop's completely well no i mean they, they have they have very similar aspects to them i guess um but it, it's it, it's not as hard as you think you know um but then again, I haven't learned the, the newest stuff because I'm an old hat and all that stuff seems really hard to me. So I guess I'm probably the wrong person to ask, you know. Dave, and I feel like an old colored, guy too. Have you colored other people? Yeah, I've yeah. colored, yeah, I've colored a few. Um, <laughs> but once again, it's, it's kind of like trying to figure out what they want versus what I feel like I should do. So it's kind of a... Uh, it's a little bit of a head, you know, uh, head trip, you know, uh, trying to figure out what lines meant what, you know, to lighting and stuff like that. So, um, and to be honest, it's, it's not as much fun to me. I'd rather just color myself. Mm -hmm. So, but occasionally I'll do it for friends like uh, Amanda Connor or, well, Alice has mainly been Amanda Connor lately. So, right. Right. Well, I mean, uh, if you ever if you ever uh, want somebody, let me know. I'd be I'd be up for giving it a shot for a cover too. You put yeah. him on the spot. That would look cool. That would be. Cool. What if he doesn't want you? Yeah, exactly. What if he doesn't want you, Dave? Well, then uh, everybody wants Dave. Problem solved. Putting Adam on the spot. I mean, I mean, my my stuff is. Uh, I try to make my stuff look human, and a lot of. New colorists are uh, all about super slick. Yeah. So if you want something that feels like a human did it, then I'm your guy. I guess. But if you don't, <laughs> do, you, do you think that super slick is just due to uh, all the digital work anymore, Dave? Is I, I well, I think I think in some ways, yeah, it's kind of a style. So uh, you know, I I like. The way I color, I like to, to feel like it started out on a real piece of paper, I guess. Right. So my, my yeah. technique kind of applies to that. Speaking of my technique. A... Um, oh, nice Wolverine. Yeah, except I just dropped a whole bunch of ink right on there. So let's see what we can do. Yeah, make it work. Uh, got to make it work. 
Put some yellow on it. It'll He's be. got a healing factor. It'll be fun. yeah, yellow. Yeah. <laughs> Color See what I can do. You know what? This will big shadow. This is forcing me to use a lot of shadow. There you go. Look at that texture, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, wow. that's it. That's how. That's how you save it. And it Use looks like finger. you wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah, except I didn't hey, want to do it over little, here. Is that a little cheese and sausage plate I see right there? Yeah, Elena, Elena <laughs> hooked me up. <laughs> Are you having a chicoterie while we while we Jeez. do this thing? Yeah, I'm trying to make this like, as much like a bar as I can. It's I a week. Didn't realize we were we were going we were going super <laughs> fancy tonight. I love that. Yeah. Is that the I'm cheese jealous. and sausage? Is that the cheese and sausage can? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should change. I should change my banner. Yeah. Forget this. Man, I'm jealous. Boring. <laughs> so, so how was it growing up with a uh, an artist brother that, basically, you know, that does the same thing? I can't even imagine. I mean, did you guys push each other to get better? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was like a healthy form of competition. You know. Um, I. You know. I would see what Andy's doing. And it would push me to 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 work further. You know, it's it's similar. You know, it would be similar um, to working in a studio. Studio. You know? um, except we were more honest with each other. <laughs> <You know>? uh, <laughs> oh, Dan and Dan can be pretty honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah, no, it was great. And and also, you know, when I was at home and my dad was around, uh, that was you know, e even when I was working at the school. It was absolutely awesome. I would go in there and, and show my dad and get his opinion on things, um, you know. So it, it was it was really really great. Hey Adam, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey Adam. So yeah, it's also you know you, you grew up with your dad was one of the most legendary comic book artists in history. Um, I'm sure there's a point when you were a little kid drawing, you know, both of you and you handed the drawing. That your dad would just like encourage you to just keep it going. At what was there a point where you could almost mark where he finally said, "Okay, now you're old and, and mature enough for me to really tell you what you're doing wrong." <laughs> was there a point, or, or was he always telling you, "No, that's not how it goes"? I guess Adam, you guys can hear me. I, I can, can hear you. Can you not hear? I don't think Adam can. Is somebody talking? I, I can't hear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I missed was it. there was there a point uh, early on in your your life with your dad where he was being very encouraging, and then when you got older, did he switch over to be more <laughs> honest about your work? Real or was he always or was he always honest? No, my dad never pulled punches. Ah. Uh, he he told you you know he wouldn't offer his opinion unless you asked him for it. Oh, that's you know? right. Um, but you know he would you know you know on on another level he would gear his criticism towards the level that you were at. I mean he he taught for years and years. You know and if you talk too far, you know if you're if, if the criticism you give is too advanced for the person that's you know that that's that's asking for it, then it's not going to do anyone any good. You know it'll just frustrate the guy. So he was really good at just giving enough information so you would strive to do better, but not too much where it would um, uh, frustrate you, you know, and, and you wouldn't draw again, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so he wouldn't I mean, overload you? Right, he wouldn't overload me, but, you know, he would throw a piece of tracing, you know, says, that doesn't look right. And I said, well, can you show me? He would just throw a piece of tracing paper over it, and it was really like magic, you know, the, the corrections that he would make and you know, it was it was incredible. It was just incredible. So it was, it was, you know, and I really didn't learn. Like I didn't ask him for criticism up until the time I went through the school. You know, before that, I kind of got to myself, and you know, I didn't really appreciate what he did or or the the awesome teacher that he was until I I attended the school and and uh, you know had the classes, had him as a teacher and, and whatnot. I mean, before that, he was just, you know, he was just my dad, you know? I mean, your your early uh, your early loves of various comic artists, was he one of them, or was it because your dad, you liked other guys? Yeah, like, who, who were you, your influences? That's, a, that's an interesting problem. question. Um, 
I didn't really like the dad's style growing up. It wow. Was, it was it was sophisticated, you know, uh -huh. and realistic. I liked, you know, I liked uh, Mobius, you know, like Arzak, uh, you know, oh, yeah, crazy that great. fantasy stuff, you know. Um, uh, I, I liked, you know, uh, what else did I like growing up? I'm trying to think of some of the early stuff that I'm thinking of, like who I saw as as your influence. Um, one of my favorite things was that Lex Luthor biography. Oh yeah, yeah. that 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 seemed to have kind of a very you know, I don't know, I don't know. I like. I colored that. Yeah, I know. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Was the worst, that that was because I actually put that on uh, plate. When people were doing like, blue lines, and, and I call the back plate, and they start that rather than, than do line. That's that, yeah, like, other effects over black, you know, that, uh, what was it, Eduardo Rizzo? Uh, I, think. I think that was Eduardo Barato. Yeah, Barato. Uh, Barato right, right, yeah. Right. You know. um, and that's, his work on that was just, it was amazing. I, mean, I just thought it was interesting that you went, you, you, you were already established as a, an artist, and then you went, went as far as to color him. I thought that was just an interesting, you know, I was like, wow, you must really mm -hmm. dig that that work, and it was cool. cool yeah, to see. yeah. I had a, a, another interesting job that I colored was over um, Carmine Infantino. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, it was a, an issue of Johnny Quest um, for Kamiko, and that, <laughs> was, that was Blue Line, and that was a blast. That was so much fun. I haven't Great. heard Kamiko in forever. They're out of business, Jeff. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's just interesting. Like, my, my I mean, that's, a, that's a black and black. It's like it's like hearing someone say a uh, uh, rotary phone. Yeah, like, I haven't heard anybody say it. Sorry, in a million years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, isn't, that, isn't one of those guys that's that was uh, uh, involved in Kamiko? Isn't he the guy that now owns Youngblood or something? No. Was that a Kamiko? The, the, the Lasorda brothers uh, owned Kamiko. Wow. Yeah, Phil Lasorda's sons. And oh, really? I, I, met, um, I worked with Diana Schutz for the first time. Um, uh, oh, what's her name? Um, she went out with. Uh, oh. I can't think of his name right now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brain fart. Interview over. Yeah. <laughs> new guest. Let's get a new guest somebody in here. Else quick. Answer, somebody <laughs> else answer questions. <laughs> yeah. I told you I can drink and draw, but but yeah. talk and draw is another thing, you know. <laughs> Are we allowed to see what you're working on? Can you? Yeah. Well, this one oh, is no, a no. uh, Psylocke. Oh. Did you already finish the cap? No, no, I work on you know a couple, you know, two or three at the same time because oh, good. it's just easier for me to see my my uh, the mistakes and make corrections and stuff. Hey Joe, can we see what you're drawing, or is it still secret? What I'm drawing? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just sketching a little floor here. Oh, right on! Wow, oh, that's great. Hey, good times. So, but you know what? I I'll be right back. I I didn't. I forgot my ink. I'll be right back. I think oh. So, no, I can't hear. <laughs> yeah, it's weird you can't hear Joe. That's I don't know why that is. That's very strange. yeah. It's yeah. selective hearing. I think I think maybe Dan has something to do with that. <laughs> Dan's, Dan's just quietly muting him. <laughs> uh, is it normally like this with Joe? Do you have difficulty hearing him in the mouth? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> blocking him out. So Adam, you're doing Wolverine now, and you've drawn him a bunch. Is there a character that you like more than others? Like I know you love Wolverine, but uh, yeah, is there a character you miss doing? Not really. <laughs> it's, all the, it's all the same now. No, it's not. No, it's definitely not all the same. You know, it, it's interesting because you know, not all characters. Let's see. I don't, you know, I don't have a table for, for, for character, but if any particular character is on my table 
and and I'm not you know 100 percent for following it. Like it's just weird. With that, yeah, you know, nice. drawing that yeah, character, yeah. I'll find, I'll figure shit, out something shit. about that yeah, book yeah. and that character that that I really like. Uh, you this. know, and, and something right, you can come in. about that character. Right, and find out, like, make that character yeah. special for you. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, well, one of the books at DC it was uh, Batman <laughs> and the Yeti. Yeah, figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, and and. Uh, it was, you know, no Batman was in there. <laughs> you know, it was just kind of oh, crazy. Really? Yeah, it was. It was basically a story about Alfred. So I, I, what I did was, I turned the whole story into double page spreads, and the the opening splash page was Alfred in a in a graveyard, with bats flying overhead, and oh, I had smart. the same bats fly through all the double page spreads from left to right, like in the gutter, till at the very last page. It, you know, I think it was another shot of uh, like a down shot of, uh, of something or other, but focused on the bats. So, you know, find something that, that you know, that excites you and, and makes like, the audience, you know, um, you know, the readers. And that's what I get from some of the books that, that, you know, that may be a little less, I may be a little less interested in. That's a brilliant solution to a, a quiet story. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Jeff, what character do you like? Can you guys hear us? I, I, I still, yeah, one I of my old friends. Yeah, I can hear you guys. I can, I can hear you, Dan. Okay. All right. Can you hear us? I guess I can. Oh, yeah. You can hear. Got a little yeah. echo. We can hear you. I'm going back home. I just came back yeah. to borrow. Uh, he just came over from New York and. <laughs> I just jumped in. <laughs> that was New York. <laughs> well, Joe Casada has the, uh, the express train. Yeah. I, I, you know what, Adam? I like uh, Spider Man. Still, my favorite. I think I understand him as a character better than any other character. So it's always fun to draw him. Mm -hmm. How do you like drawing his webs? You know, the, it's it, you, it's funny because I like drawing the old school wide webs on his co costume, but then I'll go for the Todd McFarlane like goopy spinny web uh, for the actual webbing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard about because because <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like the, don't like drawing the webs because I don't know it's time consuming or, or whatnot. Yeah, I happen to love drawing the webs because I think it gives a lot of dimension to the costume. You know? Totally. Yeah, it's the it's the um, <laughs> Spider Man's freaking out. So I'm old school, and I did the animation of Spider Man for a long time so i always whenever you're doing storyboards i always did the simplest web on his face possible well you have to at that point I mean, yeah you know. i heard that about you jeff big time <laughs> yeah i, I, I like to keep things simple dan yeah, <laughs> yeah especially on the face <laughs> yeah Hold on here. so what's right, the project are, that you're working right. on can you talk about the project that you're working on over at image uh, yeah, I'm doing it with uh, James Robinson, and it's going to come out uh, early next year. Um, and it's basically a uh, swords and sorcery kind of fantasy thing. Oh, cool. Little elves. Um, yeah, there's, there's elves and centaurs and dragons <laughs> and wizards and stuff. Um, oh, my. It's, yeah, it's going to be fun. A little bit of silliness. <laughs> yeah. How far along are you on it? Uh, I'm on the third issue. Cool. That's great. That's great. Has it, yeah, when, when is the first one supposed to come out? Uh, we're going to make an announcement early next year. Uh, I'm not sure what the schedule is yet, uh, but they'll make an announcement and figure out um, all the details. Right now, I'm just trying to get it done. Hey Jeff, when are you going to stop slumming and come work at Marvel? Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 so what, Joe? When are you going to start slumming and come work at Marvel? Um, well, as soon as I'm done with this thing, which has taken me forever, uh, then yeah. I'm sure I will be desperate for a real job. <laughs> can you show us any pages of what you're doing or when can you show us pages? um i will be able to show pages like in a month or two All right, I don't in a month or two nobody's going to care people care right now <laughs> 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 All right, uh, how about next uh the next drink and draw i'll do one of the characters that's not the same thing <laughs> it's, not, no, it's not i see i see joe's mouth moving but i can't hear him <laughs> um that's so weird we, yeah. i think that's like everybody in my life <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see your mouth moving. 
Yeah. 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 I can hear him a, a little bit through Dan's mic. Oh. <laughs> Joe, can you yell? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's better. There we go. That sounds like the Joe I know. Yeah. Channel your inner tear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, um. So do you do you guys are you, what's the next show you guys are doing? So you did New York, and that sounded like a good time. Well, which show are you not going to? Well, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, not care, going, I'm not going to any shows. Yeah, they're not all anymore. safe, Joe. You can go to any one you want. I think we should pick, we, we should all mutually pick a show to say this is going to be an official drink and draw reunion or live action or whatever. I think yeah, that's a good cool. idea. Convention and just go and you know and uh, bring this to the people, bring this to the masses. I think the masses need this desperately. They yeah. do. They'd be able to hear us, which is kind of important. <laughs> Don't you be a step in the right direction? <laughs> yeah. Do they really want to see you guys in person, though? That's no. Well, listen, I've got a great face for radio. <laughs> yeah, which is we should have done this originally <laughs> on a radio show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Adam, uh, had the announcement about the uh, the library. Uh, that's right. Cool. Uh, that was pretty neat to see. Um, yeah, anything uh, that you want to share about that? Yeah, it's super exciting. Um, now, I the, the connection I have with uh, the Rochester Institute of Technology is I'm, I'm an alumni there, um, and over the years they've had me up there and and. Um, you know, I've, I've made a, a nice connection with them. And uh, so I donated. Um, now, since my dad passed, we kept everything intact in his room, in his office at the studio, at the studio at the school. So what I did was I donated everything that was in his office. Uh, and it's going to be archived up at the library up there. Wow. Um, you know, to preserve his legacy and... You know, I know uh, the Hildebrands are going to uh, also contribute some things and hopefully some other artists will, will uh, you know, as time goes on. It, it's super exciting. It's something that, that I'm really proud of. And, and uh, you know, it's just really great. And, you know, they're looking for, you know, to build a building around it, um, which will be the Joe Cuba Library. And, uh, you know, it'll be... the the focus of the library will be not only the archive, but, you know, classes and uh, artist shows and visits. And, you know, they're, they're looking to make it a, a, like a comic book hub. Um, oh, very cool. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So it's, they're going to have artists in residence. I think I saw on the, uh... yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's neat. I've never heard of anything wow. like that. So it's a super exciting thing. Yeah. And they're going to set up like my dad's office exactly the way it was in Dover, uh, up in Rochester. Hey, Adam, I'm running. Adam, I'm running in here to ask you a question. <laughs> That's my mic. That I can to work you. for you. Um, what was the pressure growing up under your dad? You know, was it was there pressure to like, man, you know, am I ever going to make it pro? Am I ever going to be that good? Um, you know, by the way, you're not. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> None of us are. Yeah, no one is. <laughs> but that's a really good question, Joe. Um, you know, that's kind of why, I mean, I always loved to draw growing up, as I'm sure all you guys love to draw growing up. Um, yeah. And trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do with art was, you know, was, you know, as with anyone, what you want to do when you grow up? Um, well, for myself, I didn't want to follow my I didn't want to follow my dad because he cast a huge shadow, um, and I wanted to kind of find my own niche. So I loved science, I loved art, and you know my my family and I, my mom and I, put the two together, and we came up with medical illustration. So I applied to three schools. I got into one, which was in Rochester, and that's the one I went to. Um, huh. But all through college, I was drawing things out of my head. I was doing concert posters and party posters and illustration classes and, you know, medical illustration. I enjoyed, 
you know, I went into the OR and, and actually drew live um, surgical procedures, which was Whoa. super interesting. Was, yeah. was that gross? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. They, these guys are these like doctors are real like surgeons. They're just glorified auto mechanics, you know. <laughs> but fixing up everything. It's, just, it, it's amazing what they what they can do. But all through college, I was you know pulling things out of my head and and. Uh, you know, I thought, geez, you know, I got out of school there. I got my bachelor's and I was doing medical illustrations and I found that I didn't like dealing with doctors. You know, they, they, uh, they kind of talked down to artists, you know, even mm -hmm. though I took med, you know, uh, classes alongside them. Um, but besides that, so, so, you know, constantly drawing things out of my head and, uh, you know, I thought, geez, there's this great three-year school in Dover. You know, the price is right to go. And uh, so I decided to... to, to <laughs> yeah, did you give you a deal? Did you get it? Did you get it? <laughs> he, gave me, he gave me 50% off, and I lived at home, so I didn't have to pay for board. Right. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, getting back to your question, Joe, the way I got over, um, you know, uh, from from my dad's huge shadow was I, I figured, geez, you know, not only is that shadow cast over me, it's cast over everyone. So right. what the hell am I worried about? <laughs> right. I'll yeah, just so do true. the best I can do and, and not worry about it. You know, There's a lot of other things to worry about. So um, I did feel the pressure, but, you know, after a while, it, it didn't matter. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was more, you know, it was, it was a definite asset, to, you know, um, mm -hmm. to the direction I decided to go in. When you were uh, learned, so you did the, the shift from doing the medical drawings, you were, did, uh, did you have a natural understanding of how to tell a story or was that hard to learn after you'd already learned how to draw um, basically the anatomical figure, just the figure itself? Well, the, the interesting part, that's a, that's a good question also. The interesting part about that is I grew up with comic books. And and unlike all you guys, imagine you guys went to the spinner rack to pick up your books, right? Yeah. I I, I, I never went to a spinner rack. I never went to a 7-Eleven. I never went. They were always, you know, my, med, my dad got all the comps. But the funny part is he only got DC comps. I, I didn't even know Marvel existed. You know, I, I mean, I knew Spider-Man and, and Hulk from the show, but I never read any of the Spider comic, any of the, the Marvel comics. Well, I have, but, you know, it was pretty easy to get into storytelling mode because I did grow up with comics and reading comics, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't that difficult. And, I found, you know, I mean, I love superheroes now. But back then, I was more in love with, you know, um, well, uh, I should take that. I, lo I loved the superheroes back then. Not so much, you know, I wasn't so much interested in drawing them or, or you know, or who, you know, I didn't really follow artists when I was, you know, a kid. I just loved reading the stories. Um, so I forget what the question was. Did I answer it? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I get on a tangent. Well, one of the things I've always loved about you, there you go. Um, I've always loved your storytelling. It was bold. I always thought you picked really interesting shots and then uh, always had um, different angles than anyone else was doing. Jeff's kind of an angle man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, mean, I like, I was just going to say, I like doing things differently. I have a difficult time repeating, you know, I try not to repeat myself and, and, uh, you know, I, I uh, it, 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 it's a challenge and it's more fun for me that way. Yeah, I, I do love the fact that, that you're all your stuff, um, you know, it's unexpected. Like, you, it's, it's, it's like, oh, you're not going to use that same, you're not going to go back to that same well. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Where, right. Whereas a lot of artists have some kind of like, oh, I'll do this stock thing again and again and again. You don't, you don't, you don't seem to do right. that at all. No, yeah, you really don't. And like, yeah, there's always a shot like, oh shit, I would never, I myself would never have been able to picture that shot. That's one of the things mm -hmm. I always thought about your work. I'm like, damn. Well, I try, you know, I, I try, but you know, when deadlines come, you know, start hearing at you, you know, you do have to knock this stuff out. You know? 
Do you have some uh, some straight some go tos that that are, are quick and easy? <laughs> yeah, you know, close ups, headshots. You know, yeah. when when you see a page that's like all close ups, then you know I'm under the gun. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, every month I do a comic book uh, book club where we read a trade paperback and discuss it. And then um, one of the things I always find really amusing is when people talk about what the artist was thinking at the time. And yeah. uh, it's, it's always clear that they were, I'm like, oh, they were in a hurry. They, <laughs> it was midnight and the page was due. It's weird though. Some, well, of, some of the best stuff can come out that way. Yeah, totally. Hey, Jeff. But I'm, I'm there's a trip to it. And I'm sure, yeah, you, you know, club? if you guys are under a deadline crunch, you know, I'm sure, you know, if you're like me, you all are always under a deadline crunch. Right. Um, but you don't want to, I mean, obviously you don't want your stuff to look rushed yeah so what i do is i'll do the beginning of the story i'll do the end of the story first and then i'll fill in the middle um yeah. and you know it, it so so the end doesn't look rushed do you know what i mean yeah that yeah a, i use that system for years yeah you always need <laughs> your <laughs> i'm glad to hear you say that because that was always what i did because I knew that at the end I was going to blow it. And so it was easier or better to have pages somewhere in the middle be not that impressive. Nice. Then at the end, you're like, oh, Jeff completely screwed that deadline. You can tell. Uh, Jeff, I'm, Jeff, I'm sorry. I'm fascinated with your comic book club. Where, where does this occur? Oh, so I have my local bookstore. Uh, okay. We just uh, we pick a, a trade paperback every month. Um, and then uh, most of them aren't comic book people. They're just uh, local people who like the bookstore. And so every month we read a book and then discuss it. I think that's really huh. cool. Yeah, we've done some great ones. Um, it's been really good to get people who don't normally read comics right. to, uh, to think of them in a, you know, in a new way and sort of experiment with them and try them out. Well, that's cool, especially since comics are dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comic books are dead. It's hard for us to find anything good. <laughs> yeah. There's no good comics coming out. <laughs> right. We're actually doing uh, Sandman next. Um, so that'll be a fun one to talk about. Yeah. Sure. Of Sandman. Okay. Um, Do you guys get a chance to still read? Do you read comics much anymore, guys? Comic books. Yeah, yeah. The, the books, Dan. Oh. Um, the books, no. The comics, yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you one of the best comments out right now, guys. You, know, you guys have to excuse me for a second. I got to let my dog out. <laughs> it's All right. Code for something. Have, have you guys? Adam's right. I mean, I mean, X Men right now are some of the best comics. Uh, I know that we're producing at Marvel, but have you guys checked out Black Cat? Black Cat. Um, the new Black Cat series. Is oh no. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'm not going to say anything more. Just, just go pick it up. Cool. Yeah, I'll check it out. I remember last, last time I recommended something on Twitter, I told people, listen, you're going to want to reach out to me. And you know, I had a lot of fans saying, oh, it's your job. You split the promotion. Joe, can you write down everything you're saying so I could see it? So I could beat it? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody translate for Adam, please. <laughs> Transposed all this. in a court reporter. <laughs> right. Anyway, go read Black Cat. It's amazing. I'll definitely just go read, out. read Black Cat is what he's saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then all of us haven't chimed in. Do, do we agree with that, Dave? Let's, you know, let's I, I, I'll take a Joe recommendation. He knows what's what. It might be a good book. I don't know. I haven't. Known. Trust me. It's, it's, wow, it's that's a, a sell. That that sold me on it right actually, there. Actually, Jeff, you, some of you guys might remember this. It, it actually reminds me of one of my favorite James Robinson projects, Leave It to Chance. Really oh, I love movie. Leave It to Chance. <laughs> It's very much the exact same thing. It just it, it feels it has a retro feel story wise, but it's set in the modern times. It's just it's real. It's a charming, charming, charming book. Recommended highly. Uh, so, Joe, my uh, I'll send you some uh, of the pages, Joe, because we're trying to. I don't want to see them. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to put them out there. I'm going to uh, because I'm trying to capture the the feeling of leaving the chance in our book because I love I love that series. Fair. Yeah. Right. And, and by the way, anybody who's listening to this. So I got ice in my mouth. If you, you know, if you're too young to remember, leave it to chance. Or you don't know what it is. It might be out of print, but if you can find it, it's fantastic. It really is a great book. 
And I don't know how it never got made into a TV show or a movie. Well, they probably yeah. left it to chance. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Johnson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll be here all. How can I? How can I pass? How can I pass? That was <laughs> yeah. too, that was Don't forget to tip your waitresses. Yeah, good one, Dave. No, Dan uh, Never Garhide wants to know if you've ever done digital inks, Dan. No, no, no. no. That's for lesser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I'll do um, I'll do corrections with digital inks, and I think they're very useful after I scan the work in, uh, or if I have to like redraw something that I look at and it's kind of wonky, or I have to like redraw a hand or something. I'll do that. Yeah, for sure. Here's but generally, you like the you like the control you have of real ink. Yeah, I mean, I I think like here I'll try to put this up here. Maybe I can get a better. Um, that looks great. Wow, holy crap. That looks great. I fixed this little area, as you can see. Where is it? Right there by his bicep. But when yeah. I scan it in, it should be seamless. And all. Actually, you know what I'll do is I'll put, I'll do the uh, veins in there with white as to not do them here. So instead of doing white out, you'll do that in the computer? Yeah. Fancy. So. But, but isn't that kind of cheating, Dan? Totally. <laughs> Listen, anything you're not, when it's not blood on a cave wall, it's cheating. <laughs> hey, Dan, who are some of uh, your influences? Um, it was, it's, it's weird. I come from like two schools on that. Like growing up, it was Neil Adams, your father, and, and Walt Simonson and a lot of Mad Magazine. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got pulled into X-Men doing, uh, not doing, but, but, because of Savage Sword of Conan, they'd run, they'd run an ad in the back and they'd show an X-Men ad. And so I was kind of curious about like the Wolverine character. So I picked up um, X-Men and then John Byrne was drawing it at that time. So I got introduced to John Byrne's work. And then I didn't need, I was so naive to um, the styles. I didn't realize that John Byrne was kind of echoing like Neil Adams in a sense. So I, I, didn't, I never picked up on that. Um, until Neil Adams actually informed Neil me. Adams told you. <laughs> oh, he told me. All right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, but yeah, it's all the old school stuff and like creepy and eerie and um, a lot of Savage Sword. See that I see in your work, a lot of the creepy, eerie stuff, but um, you know, John Burke and Neil Adams, I don't, I don't see that. I see, you know, I was thinking about this almost like a mix between um, Jack Davis there you go. Yep. John Severin and Jordy Bernay and my wow. dad. You know, like wow. like a, a mix. Of yeah. I mean, those are, uh, I think the Mad Magazine stuff kind of seeps in. And one of yeah. my very, very first comics that I must have read, I don't know, my dad used to read it to me. I was so young, so I was probably six years old. And your dad did that uh, giant-sized Tarzan. Um, so I had all, I think there were three of them, or maybe only two of them they made. Mm -hmm. But I studied those and I mean, I, you, you really felt like you were in the jungle and the way he drew Tarzan was just this oh, yeah. sullen kind of, I don't know. It was, it was really, I mean, Conan has a very certain look when, when John Buscema draws him, like, like you can tell like John Buscema really understands the mind of Conan and your father <laughs> drew, drew a Tarzan that I don't think anyone else has kind of kept, like done ever. I mean, it's just a whole different look in his eyes yeah, uh, it was it was it was insane, especially as a young kid, and you know I still have those, and it, that made a very big impression on me. I used to try to do those little tutorials that were inside, towards mm -hmm. I guess they're towards the back, like how to draw how to draw an elephant was even in there, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Those were great. Yeah. Have you seen the the IDW oversized books that were printed? Yeah. Um, those, are those are those are like you're holding the originals. Yeah, you know? those are so good. If if, if fans out yeah. there. Um, if you ever get an opportunity, just even check one out, you know, not necessarily even buy them just to look at them like that. It looks like you're holding the, the real, real pages. Yeah. The oversized yeah. books are amazing. Yeah. They're massive. Now, I, remember, I remember when my dad did those Tarzan. Oh yeah. And, uh, I, I mean, it, it, it was really a exercise in how to meet, meet a deadline, <laughs> you know, cause he blew through that stuff. And in a way, that that was the best way for him to work on that, because 
he didn't noodle it. He didn't overdo it. He just mm -hmm. went by his gut and, and, and got through it. And it's one of the whole, uh, characters that I think he's done was, uh, the, all the Tarzan. Yeah. I, I just remember like when he, when Tarzan revisits like his childhood home from his, his parents, he kind of finds that tree house and is going through and teaching himself how to read. You can genuinely, genuinely look at that and go, okay, I can see where he's like, he's an intelligent enough person. He's a, he's a man, not an ape. And he's able to like teach himself these mm -hmm. things and kind of yeah. a, a nice history lesson of who he is. I don't, you know, it's, it's really interesting. And it, man, there's, you don't see storytelling like that too much anymore. No. And it really is interesting. And, and you know, you didn't need any pictures to tell what was going or any, any dialogue to, to yeah. understand what was going on in there at all. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Especially when he comes, he comes back out and I think he has like a, um, he has some kind of weapon or he has, he's, he's repurposed after visiting that home. And then he has a way to take care of that, I guess, head gorilla that was <laughs> messing things up for him. But um, mm -hmm. then he's all business. He's like, he's like, okay, now I got some, I got some a new, new things on my side here. It was, it was so great. I, I check it out every now and then. And every time I'm at a uh, comic book convention, if they have a nice copy of the oversized one, I'll pick it up. It's kind of like my, you know, mm -hmm. I do that with a few books. I do it with Michael Moorcock books, like the Bantam ones. And then if I can see those old Tarzan books, I always try to pick one of those up. And the, the animals that he drew in there were just, I mean, he gave emotion to the animal. Oh, yeah, the lions, the, the gorilla fights. I mean, you could tell the expressions on the gorillas, like who they were. Like, I mean, how many people can draw, unless it's like Planet of the Apes. How? Oh, it, was so, it was so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And he would just rattle this stuff off. I have like doodles of his, um, like like phone doodles while he's on the phone. He would just be drawing that. He would draw these amazing horses, just, you know, while he's on the phone. <laughs> and those are so easy to draw. Everybody yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? What was his favorite thing to work on? What was his, was it, um, what was his favorite book? You know, I, I think it's probably the more personal graphic novels that he did. You know, like um, Yussel, uh, which was a book. It was like a what if book. What if uh, he grew up uh, as a young cartoonist in the Warsaw ghetto? Um, mm -hmm. The other one he wrote and drew was Jew Gangster. You know, the the, gang, the Jewish gangsters in Brooklyn. Um, I think, you know, because later in life, those are the ones that interested him the most. I mean, he could do any comic he wanted, so, but those are the ones he chose to do. So I would think those are the ones that interested him and the, one, yeah. the ones that he liked, you know, at that particular time. I remember Abraham Stone. That was like... Yeah, oh, yeah. Stone. It was a great book. Yeah. Hey, Adam, Action, you... Sorry, Evo. Yeah. Hey Adam, do you do you ever get um, you know having seen your, your your dad's sort of creator owned stuff and very personal work, uh, you know not to steer you away from your Marvel stuff, but th have you ever gotten the itch to do something like that for yourself, like down the road, something that you could leave behind and say, you know, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, he can hear you. Okay, just, I just, I just, all right, so, something that you leave behind, you say, you know what, this is a really personal story. This isn't Marvel. This isn't Superman or Spider Man. This is this is a piece of me. I I would love to. And I look forward to doing that, that someday. Um, but right now, I'm having such a good time with yeah. what's in front of me. And, I mean, I've been at Marvel for a while. Um, and I, I, I'm i just never bored. You know, I don't, have a pro I don't have a project. I can't think of a Marvel project that I've had where I've been bored with. Who's you know, writing? Who's writing the one? Or can you say who's writing the one that you're working on now? Can you just tell us? Yeah, it's, it's uh, Ben Percy. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I had my mic off at that. Point. Oh, I see. But yeah, Ben, Ben is great. So, so yeah. Adam, do do you have that story in mind in your head, or you hasn't come to you yet? Well, no, I have a few uh, creator owned mm -hmm. characters yeah. on the back burner that right. uh, I would like to, you know, explore. I mean, they're not personal stories right. per se, like like what my dad had 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 drawn, but they are, you know, characters that that you know. I would like to, to put out there, if for no other reason, just to see if, 
it'll fly, <laughs> you know, yeah. because, you know, like, like Dave was saying, you know, penciling, inking and coloring, that's all, you know, that's all you, um, right. if you do your own character, that's all you, you know, every, every, you know, the onus of success or not is, you know, there's no way but to blame it but yourself if it doesn't fly. So I, I would like to do that. Bendis is calling uh, Joe because ah, perfect things, things were getting interesting over here. So he wants to steal your player. <laughs> I'll say how to Brian. Okay, the, the All right, that was, that was Bendis. Excellent. <laughs> right on cue. Right, right on cue. It's nice to know he watches. Nice to know he watches. Yeah. So Adam, can I ask you a process question? Yeah. So do you just start penciling right on the page? Do you do thumbnails ahead of time? Like, how do you begin? <laughs> Well, it's changed over the years. <laughs> what I, I start with is, uh, let me see, I'll show you. I start with a thumbnail. And let's see. Because you've been doing it for so long, I assume that you have you pretty much picture what it is you're going to draw before you start drawing? Not really. Not really. I, I kind of figure it out as I go. But when I do, this is like the, the thumbnail that I do for one of the Wolverine pages. Cool. Um, so from here, you know, and I'll draw, you know, I, I rough it out on one side. Sometimes I'll, I'll you know. Okay. Uh-oh. Bummer. He's about to tell me the secret. <laughs> Wait a minute. Damn it. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> oh, it's not I've wanted to know for years. Oh, oh bummer. Yeah, it looks like we totally lost him. Oh, damn it. I asked, I asked too deep, too important a question. <sighs> Way to go, Jeff. Uh, hey, Jeff, the. Uh... Wait, there he's back. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. I think we're back. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> but that was nine o'clock on the dot. I don't see one mid sentence. <laughs> but from the, from the thumbnail, all there. I'll do is. All right. I can get this. So Dan and I are switching off here a little bit. Yeah, we do that from time to time. Usually we switch off on days. Blow the old switcheroo, Dan. Remember those days? I'll blow it up. Ooh. And then I <laughs> light box this. Uh, All right. Onto the box. No, it's hot as hell. Also, in, you know, which is a, a fairly tight rough. <laughs> and uh, let me see if I have a rough. I'll show you. It's good. Rough it I think Dan and Joe's shenanigans are, are messing up Adam. Yeah, Dan, uh, why, why don't you shut up and let, uh, let our guest talk? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So this is this is like the rough that I do. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Then All right. I'll scan this into the computer, and uh -huh. this is what I ink digitally. Okay. And so then, you, uh, do you like digitally inking? I, you know, I do like it. There's a lot of things that you can do uh, digitally that are difficult to do uh, conventionally. But, um, you know, the most difficult thing about digital inking is selling the originals. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. right. That's hard. <laughs> well, hey, I got a question. Why, why are you using Bristol board if it's just a layout? Why not just use copy paper? I, because it, it, I like going on the good paper. Oh, all right. I like yeah, drawing. On, yeah, I like drawing on, on a good paper. It, you know, because this is, you know, because I'm drawing erasing. It, it handles the, you know, the work. <laughs> oh, fair know? enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but but the money shots that are in the book, I'll I'll still ink conventionally, so ah. I can still you know take advantage of that 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 market. That's but, smart. Um, yeah. But you know, it, it, even with even though like the the conventional pages. You know, I'll, I'll link conventionally. I still scan those in and and tune them up. You know, like like Dan does, um, tune them up a little bit, make small corrections digitally because it's just so easy. You know, it's so easy to do that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's way simpler on the computer to do stuff. That's what I mean. All the storyboard stuff is done uh, on the Cintiq. Right. And mostly right. just because everyone has their hands on it, so it's easier to fix and change and yeah. right. everyone to to, to touch. Right into share, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So do you start drawing it digitally or do you, do you, is there any part of that process where you're doing it conventionally? Not anymore. Not for storyboards. I, I might sometimes when I'm reading the script, do little like uh, little tiny thumbnails in the margins just to keep right. in case I have an idea. Right. But uh, all the drawing is just done digitally now for storyboards. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, well, I was going to say, here's, I mean, I did this eight and a half by 11 and, and that's literally, and then I had to start inking. So I'm making choices, you know, in the ink stage just to keep it fresh and fun. Yeah. You know? So, so okay, so uh, so you're inking it on a light box. Yeah. Dave, no, oh, there it is. Awesome. Now the quality came back. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. The camera's focused on it. Oh, that looks great, Dave. That's coming out nice. I I do a weird thing where I kind of sketch it out first, kind of like Adam and, and Dave. It, it looks a little bit like that, not that tight. And then um I'll finish it. I'll finish the drawing up digitally, and then scan, and then print that scan out, and then I'll ink that um, in the regular way. So, so you're inking right. on blue line? No, I I light box. Oh, you light box. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing. Color and myself, I'm kind of like, do I want to do I want to put shading in the ink, or do I want to save it for pure color? You know, so right. that. That's a new thing, you know, like, like in, back in the old days, I would have inked, you know, the sky is going to be a space sky, yeah. but now it, it makes more sense to do it digitally because you can do more fantastical stuff, you know, so. Right. right. Check that out, everybody. Jeff's a uh, little Wolverine action. Yeah. Wow, that's great. You need a uh, big black marker, like Dan. I do. I need a Dan marker. I just have this <laughs> little sharpie. Uh, yeah, so weak. Take a, take a You're gonna be doing that for three days. I know it's weak sauce. It's sharpie's dead. <laughs> yeah. right. I, I have a question for for Joe. And Joe, you could just use uh, um, sign language if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, maybe you should come in here then. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, just gonna come in here for it. Uh, I, I don't want to stop him from drawing. Here, he's in. Good. So, um, when when we were at the last uh, retreat, you said that you were you know you were going to get a, a screen to put on, like a, a film to put on your screen, so the screen felt more like paper. Yeah, yeah. it's called paper like. Yeah. How did? Thanks, have Dave. You tried that. And, oh, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Joe, Joe, you're no, that's, that's I read all the way in here. That's the <laughs> answer to <Adam's> question. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave just snipes it. Yeah. Dude, like it you know, Adam, it's called paper light. <laughs> what, yeah. What's it called? It's called paper light. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's basically paper. it's just basically a uh, you know it's like it's like screen protector for your iPad, but it's got a, a a texture on it that gives it a little bit a little bit of a tooth. And you like it. It's better than I like it better than just drawing on glass. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Glass takes a long time to get used to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes the iPad a little more livable. I, I I have I have a hard I have an easier time with a Cintiq than I do with an iPad. It's just so slick, you know. And the pencil is slick too. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I recommend. Dave, you want to jump in here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's Dan. Joe, when you go back to your camera, uh, the, the audience would like to see your progress. Now, do any of you guys that, that, that ink digitally, um, you ever make your own brush? Or do you use, you know, um, well, like stock brushes? I, I, I've made my own, but it was uh, usually when it came to something that is a repeating image. Um, I've, I've made those, like like birds. You know, like if you wanted to draw like a shit ton of fucking birds flying and they're all still wet. <laughs> and, or bats. I've done it with bats. I've done it with uh, grass. I've done it with grass. Um, you know, but I, but I haven't really made my own brush brush, you know, because there's so many good ones out there anyway. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Have you made yours, Adam? Do you, make, do you have specific brushes I, you like to use? I made one. Well, actually, my wife Tracy made it for for me with me um, because I, you know, I'm looking at the the stuff that um, that that Silva is doing in in the the powers of X, um, powers of ten, or um, 
Maybe it's the other one. I'm at right now. But it looked like to me in the background, some of it is like some kind of digital brush effect. And uh, I played around with a bunch of the stock brushes and none of them, you know, I couldn't get any of them to work. So I, you know, with, with my wife's help, we made uh, like a cross hatching brush. Oh, which cool. worked out really, really cool. And uh, you, I just have to be careful that I don't overdo it, <laughs> you know, because then it's gonna, you know, it just won't look good. Um, so I just have to hold back how much I use it, but it, it's really fun. I mean, you talk about digital inking, some of that stuff, yes, we can do cross hatch, obviously, um, everywhere if we want, but that takes time to do it digitally and, and still have it look organic. Um, yeah, that's the key. That, yeah, that is the key. And that's part of the thing, you know, that, that um, I, I try to stay aware of to, to, to keep it um, looking or, uh, organic. Yeah, I see a lot of sam ink samples and, you know, there's so many cool tools in Photoshop and in Clip Studio, which was Manga Studio, where, you know, you can get these great effects. But if you overdo it or if the effect is too small, I think, you know, the eye recognizes when we're looking at a comic book that, no, that's a, that's impossible to achieve that line, uh, no matter how big you're drawing. And then it kind of oh. takes, I don't know, for me, it takes me out of it, but I'm, I'm kind of old school in that way. Yeah, yeah. I, the, and it, it took me a while to figure out what brush to use because it, you know, when I'm inking conventionally, the ink is never jet black. You know, I mean, black magic is jet black, but that, that, that stuff is way too thick. Um, and we always water it down, which grays the ink out a little bit. So that's the look that I like when I work digitally. And I use this, um, what is it? It's, uh, it's called one of Kyle's brushes. It was oh, yeah. He has, he has good brushes. Yeah. It, it was a, a, a gouache brush. So it's not like a jet black look to it, which, which you know, I, I think tends to make it look a little more, you know, a little less digital, you know, yeah. which I like. Well, that's a good tip. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that, Jeff? I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so rare for Jeff appreciation. Good. I okay. really appreciated that. <laughs> I, I feel that you appreciated it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I've learned from this broadcast another pro tip is uh, to have a famous uh, comic book father. Well, that can't hurt. <laughs> yeah, that never hurts. That's a, that's a good thing. My, yeah, you know what? I was kind of lucky that my dad, my dad had such good taste. Like the, he, he always wanted to be a comic book artist, and so the comic books he would get by me when I was a little kid were like, you know, they were Joe Kubert, they were Walt Simonson, Neil Adams. Um, those were the, the ones he liked. So it, it mm -hmm. certainly helped having that stuff around. Then he, I think he even worked on an ad campaign once with with Neil Adams, a Burger King ad campaign. When I was a kid, I remember when I was a little kid living in Cleveland. Um, Your dad? My dad was a commercial artist. Oh, I see. Yeah, and he had his own ad agency. So he did, he did the uh, slack work. I think when the overflow, when when Neil was Neil, kind of created a style. Again. Remember that that Burger King that looked like a real person that, that they brought back now. Yes. And the creepy. Yeah. The super creepy one. <laughs> yeah. So that's Neil. <laughs> yeah. That's so, yeah. the creepiest one. Yeah. So, so my dad would pick up the slack on that stuff growing up and um, oh, wow. draw him. Cool. And actually, he was drawing the, the Burger King for the previous version of that one where it, he just looked like Captain Crunch practically. Uh -huh. That's that was cool. a long time ago. Hmm. Mm. I tell you, it's really, you know, it, it, it takes a special parent to allow their child to go into well, being an artist much less a, a comic book artist you know mm -hmm. um and and you know to have that kind of uh, um uh uh what's the word um don't give a shit about what your kids do <laughs> <laughs> want you to be happy want you to be happy with yeah, your I'm note. support them. Support is the word that's important. <laughs> my, my dad did not want me being a comic book artist, though, or an artist in general. He, he oh, really? Uh, no, nah, he is. You know, since he was an artist and he, he, he was an art director for a long time, worked for a, a big company when we moved to Florida uh, called Harris Corporation. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's steady work. But as a freelancer, he he, he recognized just how tough that is. I mean, he's, he's right. It's not a, always an easy lifestyle, but um, no, it's I, not. I, I actually, he, he, 
He uh, Dan's father actually thought he would have made a good Saran wrap model. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I tried that for a time. And failed miserably. So. <laughs> no, but you know, I I got out of comic books for about ten years, and then I um, I just missed drawing comics so so much. Yeah, my my dad had passed away, and I think right around the time he passed away is right when I got out of comics, and maybe I was deciding like, was I doing it for me? Was I doing it because I knew he loved comics and that was something he wanted to do. So when it came back to it, uh, when I came, when I came back to it, you know, I came back with, I, I started drawing differently. I wasn't trying to be a um, Jim Lee clone. I was just drawing on instinct because I had to make a living doing storyboards and design work. And I, my, my style had changed back into, I guess my earliest influences. Mm -hmm. Now you did a lot of like early on, I don't remember seeing a lot of your drawing work but I saw a ton of your inking work. Yeah, I was inking quite a bit. I was trying to be Scott Williams, basically. Mm -hmm. um, now, did you find it difficult to transition into doing mostly drawing? Uh, yeah, it was tough when I when I got out of comic books. I you know I would call up Jeff Johnson a lot, and and, and he would he would do yeah why? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff said why? I mean, <laughs> Joseph why? Up. But I would, but I would call Jeff, and Jeff would lay things out for me. But more, I got more and more. I just had to start relying on my own drawing. And Jeff, Jeff, using Jeff was kind of like a crutch. And then um, eventually, I started doing my own work. You grew out of that pretty quick, right? Yeah. Well, Jeff's expensive. Good crutch. <laughs> Jeff's super expensive. He never gave me a friend discount. <laughs> well, he gave you top billing a lot. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> it's a joke that just never gets old. Yeah, one time, one it's time only happened Adam, I, once in the history of comics. It's only happened once. Jeff, Jeff um, did a guest issue of X Men, and instead of his name going first as penciler, they put my name first as inker, and then his name below mine. I was like, I don't think it's ever been done before. Jeff was convinced I talked to Bob Harris and arranged that. Yeah, I mean, it's never happened. There's no way that happens by accident. <laughs> you weren't well liked back those days. Those days I'm not Jeff. well liked now. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> right, no, it's never happened, Adam. It's never happened before or since. Did I ever ink you, Adam? I don't. I inked your brother, but not not your work. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I'll tell you who who loved inking you was uh, Tim Townsend. Would like like dance on the ceiling every time he got one of your pages in. He was yeah. so like. I hate to use the word tickled, but it seems appropriate. <laughs> like Elmo. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, I loved working with him. His, his inking is amazing. You know, it was amazing. Yeah. I was just as tickled. I hate using that word, but I was. <laughs> a lot of tickling. You, get, you start drinking and drawing, and the next thing is the evolution is tickling. Right, yeah. That's just inevitable. The comments, let's see if they reflect that. Yeah. Silly yeah, we got any comments? There's oh. been some good questions, but we've been jabbering a lot. Here's a question for Adam. Let's see here. Question for all. Oh, all but Adam. No, let's do an Adam question. Here we go. <laughs> Adam question. Did you have a favorite teacher while at the art school? Well, I, I would think that might be obvious, but. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Other than your. Well, dad. yeah, that is kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah. um, besides my dad. I loved uh, Jose Delbo. Oh, wow. Um, he was a terrific teacher and just a, a great guy. And, and I see him on the convention circuits now. And, and uh, you know, in, in fact, wait, let me show you something. I got, I got signed. Let me get it. So I got from Jose to Adam, my favorite student, Jose. <laughs> Of course, cool. I wrote this part. <laughs> <laughs> and then showed it to him later. Yeah, yeah. I said, would you sign this for me, Jose? <laughs> Here's another question. Um, do, you, do you do a lot of life drawing or sketching from life, or do you just draw from your imagination always? Oh, f for me? Yeah, for you. Um, I always I do a lot of sketching from life. Um, I carry a pen with me. In fact... I'll show it to you. It's a special magical pen. The magic nib, Jeff. Magic pen. Always looking for that. <laughs> it's uh, the the bullet pen. It's um, the space pen. Oh yeah. Oh. It, it's really great because it, it's small. 
and it's right in your pocket. So it, it's really awesome. But even more awesome than the size, the ink just um, it flows out of it. It's almost like a pencil. It, it works so well. Um, and you know, I draw on it draws on napkins, and I'm always drawing when I'm when I'm out. Um, and I think that's really one of the key things that we do because it, it kind of keeps you honest. Um, if you constantly draw out of your head, you know, the tendency would be to repeat yourself and, and maybe make the same mistakes. Um, but if you're keeping an eye on, you know, life and, and drawing from life, um, that, you know, kind of sets you straight. So I, I draw it uh, from life all the time. Not, not figure drawing classes, just observational drawing yeah jeff jeff and i did a lot of life drawing when he still lived yeah, here and yeah well you, you would sit around and just, you would just draw each other nude right sure well, I mean, that's the best part. Hands in great shape <laughs> jeff is pretty flexible uh, yeah. poses. i can almost do the splits hey they're good enough Ooh. for me what about you, Dan? Do you uh, do figure drawing classes, or I, are you sketching, or one of the one of the great things out here in, in LA is there's so many um, life drawing sessions, and there's a group called the Gallery Girls, and just about every week they're somewhere at some gallery or some place, and even at, they even come to Drink and Draw where, where we actually go on. It's called the Other Door in Burbank, mm -hmm. um, the first Sunday or the second Sunday of each month, and it, I, I credit that to like learning how to draw a lot better. It's just drawing from life. It, it, a lot of people think like if you draw from life, that uh, comic book artists feel like if they draw from life, that it's going to affect their comic book style. And I think of it as cross training, you know, like an athlete yeah. cross trains. It's just, it really helped me. I mean, I, I, without it, I don't know. I, I, I'd still be drawn pretty lousy. So Yeah, we went every week for a couple of years there, didn't we? Yeah, we oh, we went there. I, I every time I get a chance, I still try to go. And I know Jeff, are there some up in by, by you and or not? Uh, no, not really. There are some, but I, it's it's not as easy. LA is the hot spot for it. Yeah, I mean, and it's not just the gallery girls. So they're the they're the, they're the most uh, they have the most um, sessions ever. But there's a lot of different ones. There's some art colleges around here that will host things and great models, of course, all different kinds. You know. Mm -hmm. Men, women, old men, old women. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I used to do. Uh, <laughs> um, old when, men. <laughs> when, 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 when my dad was around, we would go to, you know, they would have figure drawing classes at the school. And I would go with my dad, and he would go every week. You know, I couldn't make it every week. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I, I could never sit next to him yeah. in class. Because I, I wouldn't draw. I would just watch what he's doing, you know. And if I draw, why look at the model? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, whenever I try to go to those things, I always try to do a like the, the tonal drawing, which which makes you think think of those three-dimensional forms. It's, uh, and I inevitably will go back in with ink, but I am always marvel at those true like classically trained figure artists that can just th their tonal illustration is just insane mm -hmm. i mean it really teaches you a lot about light and form and that's something i never t took in earlier yeah that um, stuff's always always impressive to watch someone else do it well yeah you're talking about drawing on like too. a like like a great paper like a uh, a toned paper right mm -hmm. that always helps yeah yeah it's great I try not to sit next to like an Andrew Robinson at a uh, show. And they, inevitably, <laughs> yeah, they'll sit me next to that guy, and I can't draw. I just want to watch him. Yeah, he's yeah. great. I love. I, I follow all those guys on Instagram, and it, it's it's. I, I think you know, social media has done wonders for me. You know, just uh, you know, just following these guys, it, it gives you you know, it gives you that little push to to do better yourself because you see how good you know. Some yeah. of the stuff that that these guys are doing is just amazing, you know. Yeah, you can't you can't run an inspiration on the uh, internet at all. I mean, there's just too many great artists. Mm -hmm. I'll go down on uh, like Instagram, for instance, and and basically 
look who my favorite artists are following. And there's always like someone new I haven't heard of. And I'm like, oh, okay, of course they lay like this person. They're amazing. And they have like 700,000 followers. I'm like, how did I ever not know who this person was? Yeah. yeah. And how else, I mean, if, if it wasn't for that, how else would you find out about these people? It was know? TV and art previously, but, but yeah, without the internet, um, it was just conventions and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, the, the way I found out, out about this was years ago, like Serpieri. Um, oh, his stuff is ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. Um, I used a letter heavy metal magazine. Um, wow. And yeah, <laughs> a long time ago. Um, but I would get, you know, they were, because they were reprints, they had to be translated it, uh, into English. But I would get all these guys' work that I've never heard of before. Um, you know, because I'd never go to the spinner rack to pick up any mag magazine, much less heavy metal. But when I started working on it, and and uh, you know, I mean, that's how I found out about those guys. You, you know, I, I don't know about, about the rest of you guys, but and Adam probably can't hear me. Uh, I can hear you. Way, oh, you can. Yeah, now I can hear you. Oh wow, okay. Um, but it was also the yearly pilgrimage to San Diego Con, and then the Bud Plant booth. Oh right? yeah. Oh, yeah. go, right. oh my God, who's this, who's this artist? Who's this artist? And all just, just artists from all around the world, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. you know, yeah, somebody uh, just mentioned uh, Louis Stahl, the guy who did all the Peter Pan. Yeah. Uh, another great Manara, guy. That, I think Discovery they, Manara? Oh my God. Yeah, and then Greg Marini, stuff I love, and I, I saw him in heavy metal. Um, I guess that's how you met Mark Irwin, too. Wasn't He was his joe kubert uh, school yeah, alumni yeah. and then he worked at heavy metal editing for a while right yeah yep yeah. and julie simmons um, she was the editor of heavy metal and another interesting thing was national lampoon were and heavy metal were sister magazines and through lettering heavy metal i actually got a lot of work at national lampoon huh. which was super fun to do i did this one job well, you, I, for me, it was like practicing a different style. Every time I would bring something in, it would, you know, one time I would I copied uh, um, Serpieri style. Another time I copied like Bazooka Joe style. You know, another time I copied, you know, something else. But I did this one. It was, um, oh, geez. It was, uh, well, it was Mr. T and the O team. He, Mr. T would, <laughs> this is really dating me go around and make sure every woman would have an orgasm. Um, yeah. this guy. Uh, That's good literature. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, was, that was high end stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. And the other, the other one was citizen porn. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of, and, and what was interesting about that is I had to watch citizen Kane like three times in a row to get the, the feeling for, the story that I was going to be drawing, even though it was just in porn. But I, the funny part was uh, at, the, at the end of the story, instead of uh, Rosebud, it was uh, an enema hose and it was Hosebud. And he threw in like his enema hose into the fire at the end. Wow. What, wow. what, what, <laughs> yeah. what company was this? <laughs> <laughs> National Lampoon. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Here's uh, Dave is. Uh up to something here. Whoa. Uh, Damn, Dave is see. hauling ass on this. Yeah. This is great. Why today? That's amazing. Huh. Yeah, uh, hmm. A couple of months it. ago, using uh, 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 like acrylic paint and uh, oil, like like not oil paints, but oil, and then you they don't mix. And you do it on a flat surface and you get all these really cool, you know, bubbles. Yeah. So, oh, that's so trippy looking. Wow. Right? Dave loves bubbles. Loves bubbles, guys, bubble baths. You guys remember the, um, the album artist, uh, Roger Dean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He used to use that technique all the time on all those album covers. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Dave, I can't believe you actually gave up a secret. <laughs> they, they're so against like tutorials <laughs> yeah they stuck everybody. a tutorial in there <laughs> well, you know nobody's watching so you know. <laughs> yeah. well i'm taking notes 
I mean, you know, trying, it, it was it was actually quite hard to figure out, but uh, to, to get it to you know, to get it to work right. It's funny um, you say it's kind of hard to figure out, but it's really just mixing two elements. So well, it's a little harder than that, but you know, whatever. Yeah, it looks pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it right on the glass of your scanner? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly nailed it first time. <laughs> Who's that guy in the bottom? He looks familiar. That, that character he's stepping on. Uh, I don't know. I just made him up. I was kidding. Just joking, Dave. Joe, the uh, the audience really wants to see your Thor, man. Oh, uh, yeah. They're, I'm stuck around for me. Just, yeah. They're burning for a Thor update. Yeah, it's it's some kind of burning love. <laughs> bouncing back into the Thor, and then they're to Wait, wait. Let me just put you up there. Too late. Hold on. Oh, too late. Too late. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's too, too slow. Damn it. It, it's a mouse click. Yeah. It's trying to hit all of it. <laughs> awesome. right, so dark. I didn't always have darkness yet for a while. So. Mm. Did you find the dimmer switch? I thought it was always right, right behind. Hmm? Right behind Joe's head is a um, Dave original cover from Hunter Bullets painting. Oh? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> There's Bill Ray on the other side, that house, the blue house. Um, uh, the other way, yeah. That's Bill Ray over there. <laughs> Bill Ray is in Joe's right. ear. Nice. Uh, who's that? That's that's me. That's the only piece of artwork I have of mine that's up in the house. Who went over it? I don't know. I think Elena did that, my wife. She scribbled all those things on there. Nothing to do with what I was drawing. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And my son is obsessed with um, everything in Nightmare Before Christmas. So the whole house is, as Joe walked in, he was like, there's so many skeletons here. <laughs> he does love that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. So who are some of you, now that I can hear you, who are some of your influences? Joe? Oh, Joe. me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, some of your influences? You know, clearly Mignola, uh, Mobius, um, Mucha, Alex Toth. Those are like yeah. the, those are the, you know, the, the big ones. You know, your dad, of course, you know, I remember your dad stuff when I was a kid, like, like when Dan Schwerf got Tarzan, but I'm like, oh my God, I had this. So mm -hmm. I, I, or, didn't your dad do the Bible too, right? Yeah, he did a book called The Bible. Yeah. That was, that he wrote was the Bible. Yeah, he wrote the book. That was that was oversized. And I remember reading that through, and just like it was ridiculous how beautiful that book. Yeah, he did um, that with uh, Nestor Redondo. And, and you know, and Kirby, of course, Kirby. Yeah. You know? So, but what 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 was your? I, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. What was your like your dad's opinion of Kirby? Because they're, they're so radically different, but they both so so revered. You know what I mean, in the same way. Um, he. I don't know what his opinion of of Kirby was. I know he appreciated, you know, his talent, um, mm -hmm. and and you know the fact that he got so much work done. But I don't know. I don't know um, if you know if he was fond of the style or or, or not. I mean, they, they couldn't be more different. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it's funny because they they both abstracted in completely different ways. You know, yeah. what I mean? it's yeah. it's like your your dad had this sort of very you know curvy linear thick ink brush. You know, and Kirby was like almost like a student, right? In, 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 on the other side of it, it was really interesting. Right, know? but but what they did have in common, they were both ballsy with their drawings. Yes, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, they may not. You know, the styles may have been completely different, but yeah. you know, it was balls to the wall with everything that they did. You know, yeah. yeah the stuff had incredible energy to it, always. Yeah. You know, even 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 characters that were standing still looked like they were in motion. Yeah. Yeah. Had the most impressive handshake I've ever encountered. <laughs> yeah, actually, Ben has brought that up before. <laughs> no kidding. Joe. Uh, Joe. Uh, or, or, or uh, Joe. Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you're dead with yeah, you did. my arm off my socket once. Yeah. You, did. you know, uh, something comes to mind with, with, with Dave. Um, I remember the first time I met you, Dave. I forget what convention it was, but it was with Sergio Aragonis and my dad. Oh yeah, 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 with uh, Darwin Cook and oh, yeah, yeah. WonderCon in San Francisco. Yeah, was that where, 
Was that yeah. what it was? Yeah, that's yeah. when we got kicked out of the restaurant. <laughs> and we took a, I, I think I took a picture <laughs> of the three of you, and you were, I have that picture somewhere, and you were behind my dad and Sergio, like you were like twirl, twirling your mustache like Sergio's. Was, <laughs> well, I had that fake one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Mustafa? Yeah, Mustafa, yeah. Mustafa uh, <laughs> the man. That's, that was a character. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, that was a fun. That was actually that was the only time I ever met your dad. Oh really? So, yeah, that was that was it. I met so, him one time when I, when I first moved to New York. The very first convention I ever went to, I met your father, Walt Simonson, and Neil Adams all on the same wow. day. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Is that a day? Yeah, it was one day. I was like, oh, I guess I. Day. Okay, so I guess I'm done. Yeah. Oh, Joe seems to be out. Joe's yeah. gone. Well, that pissed him off. <laughs> hey guys, my computer's about to die. My battery's almost gone. Oh yeah, we've kind of gone over, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. we're at the hour and a half mark. All right, yeah. well, good times, good yeah. timing. Well, that was a lot of fun, oh, Adam. Thank you so much for coming on. That was great. Yeah, I thanks for sharing. Me. And next time, I, I want to hear everything that Joe said, not just like you know, <laughs> you said. Because next time, I want to hear everything you said. Yeah. <laughs> of course, he still can't because oh, I, have, I have one of these. Crazy, crazy right. mics not right. plugged into. He now he oh, can't hear you, so it's kind of apropos. <laughs> it's okay. Well, that was great. Thanks, well, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right, I guess we'll sign off. Ben, any All words right. of wisdom for anyone? Uh, you know, uh, looks like another rough night for the Yankees. Um, so Joe's Aww. probably happy about that, and uh, the Chiefs are winning. So you know, there's important things to go watch. People called sports. Okay. Uh, sports yeah it was a great time uh it was great to see uh adam and learn so much from you uh great Thanks, guest. and uh, a lot of good questions from you jeff oh, shit. you were really okay. your game. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you did your homework jeff it's yeah, well, yeah. did your homework <laughs> every once in a while write some of those down and share them for now yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next time, all I'll right. Out. Out. Later. Joe's right. Joe's got places to be apparently. I got a dinner to go to. <laughs> Thanks all again, right, Adam. Thanks, all right. Welcome, everybody. Great, Thanks for joining us. It was a great drawing along. Yeah. Now we're signing off. It's slowly. The screen is dimming. Yeah. See if it's going to happen. <laughs> there. Wait for it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh.